I'm Joel Sharpton, Chief Editing Officer for Pro Podcasting Services. I am in the park, or a park, uh, near my house. And those are my children that you hear in the background there. They're enjoying a great um, playset that we have here. It's a big, there's a couple of slides and all sorts of fun stuff here. Um, the topic for today is, what are you afraid of? I wasn't really scared of anything that I can think of. I guess that I didn't have a topic when I first started um, to do a podcast. I was afraid I didn't have a topic. But what I wanted to tell you about is what I was afraid of uh, as far as starting my own business. When I first went out on my own, when I first went independent, or before I did, I had already been doing voice work at that point for more than six months. I'd done a couple of audio books and I'd done a handful of commercial, you know, commercial spots on my own and I'd done some podcast intros and outros. Uh, I had even started doing some podcast editing. Uh-oh, there's a spider, come here, come here. Daddy's gotta save the day from a spider. Hang on, I got it, the spider's gone, baby. The spider's gone. Look at that, spider's gone. You got him, he's all gone. Daddy saved the day. I was already doing independent work, quite a lot of independent work, as a matter of fact, before I actually uh, stopped being an employee and became a contractor for the radio station. And what was I scared of at the time? I, my wife, I know, was scared that none of this was gonna work. <laughs> it was great. The first big check that I cashed, the first audiobook I did for Thomas Watson, uh, I cashed a pretty big check. It was, you know, $1,200 or something. I. I got the $1,300 receipt and I put it in the bank account and everything, you know, and that night we were laying in bed just talking before we went to sleep and Kelly says, listen, I want to tell you something and I, I didn't want to say anything in the middle of it because I knew you were trying to do your thing. I just really was not sure that this was going to work and it was so, I loved her so much for the way that she put it because she said, she said, I wasn't scared that we weren't, you know, like going to be able to feed the kids or pay the bills and stuff because you're a hardworking guy and we're resourceful and we've got a great network of friends and if everything fell apart, we would find a new way to make things happen. <laughs> but Kelly says, I, I wasn't, so I wasn't scared that things weren't gonna actually go forward. She says, I was scared that you were gonna really try, that you were gonna really put all your effort into this thing that you loved and that you really wanted to do and that you'd been dreaming about for years, but that the timing wouldn't be right or that you just wouldn't be the right fit, or that, that it wouldn't be whatever, it wouldn't work. You wouldn't be lucky, it wouldn't be fortunate, and it wouldn't happen for you. And then I just knew how dejected and sad you were gonna be. <laughs> I was really, really scared about that. That's what Kelly told me. She said, but I see now, it's gonna work. This thing is gonna work. We were like six months in, I guess, at that point, four or five months in at least. I love that she didn't say anything about that until she had been convinced. What was I scared of when I started? I was scared that I wouldn't, I, I couldn't continually build new clients. I was scared that I couldn't sell. That was the biggest thing that I was scared of. I've done sales a couple of times in my life of different kinds. I sold radio ads for a very brief period. <laughs> Terribly, ask, ask Gary McKinney about that sometime. I, I, uh, I sold cars, I sold cars for like four months, uh, one summer, one summer in college, my second summer in college as a matter of fact. I was really, really bad at it. So anyway, when I when I decided, hey, I want to do this on my own. I want to run my own business. I thought, well, I can't sell myself, and I can't sell I can't sell anything else. So why do I think I would be able to sell myself? Why do I think I'd be able to sell the idea of podcasting, for instance, or of me doing your voice work and that sort of thing? I had several friends that told me it would be different because I believed in the product. <laughs> you know, I, because I was selling myself, it would be a different thing, and it has been. I can't. It's the kind of thing that you don't. No one can tell you, no one can teach you, you have to experience. Okay, you're climbing up the slide. Be very, very careful, please. Daddy's telling his business story. Okay. Uh, you have to experience it. Once you get out on your own and once you're actually out there in day-to-day, -day, you're talking to people, you're explaining what you do, uh, why they should work with you, um, why you love this industry so much to, to stake your future on it and your career on it. You know what I always tell my clients, I end up telling them, and it's corny, but I do, I think podcasting is going to save the world. <laughs> so when you feel that way about a medium, it's easy to, to sell it, it turns out. But that's what I was scared of. You know, I've lost my biggest client now, twice, because of different reasons. Neither one I felt like was my fault in either case, but of course, I'm sure everybody feels that way, right? But I lost my biggest client twice, once to a, a media agency and, and once just to another editor. 
and I was terrified in both circumstances, but both times I have replaced that client with my new biggest client within days. I mean, literally. I continually meet new people working for myself that align with my, you know, view of the world. Not always with my political opinions or my religious opinions. Uh, one of my best friends in this, um, you know, thing, one of, my, one of my best friends that's a client is Ray Wood. Ray Wood's an avid atheist, and I am a very devout Christian. I'm a Methodist. I just got back from church with the girls this morning. And yet he and I get along famously. And in general, he and I look at the world in a very, very similar way, even though we don't share a religion or a philosophy of, of, of theology. But I, I continue to find people who are about putting out a message of positivity, who are about building things instead of breaking things down. It seems like the more I am myself in public, the more I am myself out front of the business, the more those people are drawn to me. So anyway, what I'm saying to you is, whatever it is that's holding you back from starting your business, or launching your podcast, or starting that YouTube channel, which I try to share what's important to me because I think, in general, you create the cloud of, of you know witnesses around you, right? Um, you bring the people that you want in your life into your life by being the way that you want those other people to be. <laughs> All right, be careful. Be careful. So anyway, whatever's holding you back from writing that novel or starting that class online or starting that podcast or starting your YouTube channel. Come here, sweetheart. You going to sit with me for a minute? Yeah. Um, whatever is holding you back, uh, stop letting it hold you back. And um, get out there. Get out there. Turn your phone on and uh, make a Facebook Live video. Um, get on uh Anchor, anchor.fm, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it is the easiest way in the world to do podcasting. You don't have to know any technology. You can talk right into your phone. You can begin to craft your message. If you really want to craft a message and you've got a business or a nonprofit organization and you think, you know, I don't, I don't want to do this in a, in a half way. I want to do it right. And uh, I want a pro to help me set it up. Then I'd love to work with you, of course. But regardless of what your message is, you need to get active and, and, and start sharing it with people because what's going to happen is you're going to have to um, stop arguing with people on Twitter. You're going to have to stop being uh, ticked off at what the president did or didn't do. Uh, you're going to have to stop watching uh, so many TV shows because you're going to be too busy interacting with and engaging with the community that you've built just because you've been sharing your message. So that goes for business people. That goes for people who just want to make the world a better place. Hang out with me tomorrow. Tomorrow in particular, one of the things that I'm going to do uh, tomorrow is I'm going to tell you about um, the subject that I'm focused on this year. Anybody who's seen my post know that I've got a lot of opinions about a lot of things. But I have been particularly burdened this year with the um, violence in schools that we've seen, the gun violence in particular. And I think that there's something we can do about that. I've got some opinions on, on how we could change it, but my opinions don't really matter uh, any more than your opinions do. What does matter is that we start the conversation. So I'm going to tell you about that and tell you a, a group that I've joined. Hang on just one second, love. I'm going to tell you about a group that I've joined uh, called Moms Demand Action, and I'm going to give you some info uh, that you can follow up on if you're interested in being part of the solution to this problem as well. So today, I'm going to go play with these girls on this slide. Hey, Utah, you want to come tell everybody bye? Come here. Okay, bye. Go to no, just on this slide. This is it. One second, please. One second, please. Okay. All right. We're gonna wrap up for now, and we're gonna go play on the slide. But um, oh wait, you're gonna say bye. Oh uh, we. Anyway, goodbye. Goodbye, boy. My ratings are gonna go sky high with that one. Okay, we need to go to the restroom. All right, we'll go do that. All right, bye. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you tomorrow.